fourth grade, we're continuing our reading of Out of My Shell. And I am going to um, begin actually at the top of page 180. We may be backtracking just a little, but we'll begin at the top of page 180. And this is when um, Lainey was out in the ocean and her sister realized that she had left the house and, and gone out into the ocean uh, at night. Then suddenly, Lainey was coughing and choking and making gurgling noises. The blue of her lips faded to gray, then bloomed with pink. Her eyes blinked open and she was staring right at me. Her eyes seemed glazed at first, but gradually came into focus. Olivia, she croaked. My name never sounded so sweet. The turtle, she said, her voice raspy and strained. Shh, I tried to soothe. I thought she meant the dead hatchling. How did she know about that? He's gone, I said. I, I sent him off on a piece of driftwood. No, my sister shook her head. My balloon, the turtle. She still sounded croaky and she broke into tears. Rivulets ran down her cheeks and landed in the sand beneath her head. Laney, you're not making any sense. Just rest. The ambulance will be here soon. I kissed her forehead, relieved to find it more tepid than before. Please live, she said. I don't want the turtle to die. Mr. Emerson stood and huffed, his gaze fixed on something in the ocean I couldn't see. What is it with you girls and those turtles? Then just like that, he took off for the waves. Dazed, I watched him wade chest deep into the raging sea. He squared his body to each incoming swell and was stout enough to somehow keep his footing. But as he worked his way deeper, a violent surge gobbled him up. I held my breath until I saw his head pop above the waves a few seconds later. Why? I said, what is he doing? It was all I could do to pull Laney from the ocean. There was no way I had the strength to rescue Aiden's grandfather. Look, Laney said, pulling herself to a seated position. He has her. As she rose, so did the more, so did more of the moon, ocean inside her. She coughed and sputtered. I feared she'd taken in so much and might never fully empty out. When I turned to look, Mr. Emerson was half swimming, half trudging back to the beach. Under one arm, he was log lugging a small adult sea turtle. A deflated yellow balloon trailed behind him in the ocean. It wasn't until they came ashore that I put the pieces together. It was Laney's balloon. The turtle was entangled by the string. That's why she'd gone into the ocean. Everything happened at once then. The paramedics arrived, they swore my sister with instruments, listening to her heart, listening to her breathing, putting tubes in her nose. They were loading her onto a gurney when my mom, grandmother, and grandfather all showed up, showed up with bathrobes and stricken expressions. They were so concerned with Laney, they hardly noticed me. I squeezed my sister's hand as the rest of my family hovered over her and the paramedics. Go, she said to me, I'm okay. Mr. Emerson was sitting on the edge of the ocean with the turtle overflowing from his lap. The balloon string wrapped around the turtle's head, around its shell and ensnared in flippers. Probably thought she was dining on jellyfish, Mr. Emerson said. Got an unpleasant surprise tonight, didn't you? He stared deep into the turtle's eyes. You and me both. We were both sopping wet and Mr. Emerson noticed me shivering in the breeze. What a miserable night, he said and pulled a pocket knife from his wet cargo pants. I'll be lucky if it doesn't rust. He flipped open a silver blade and it shimmered in the moonlight. With the same care and precision he'd shown in aiding my sister, he sliced through the string, cutting the sea turtle free. The yellow balloon fell to the sand and I snatched it up and tucked it under a rock before it could blow away again. You want to do the honors? Mr. Emerson asked, staggering under the weight of the turtle as he rose to his feet. She was nearly as big round as a manhole cover, and judging by the way he struggled to lift her, weighed about the same. I will do you, he gestured with the turtle. 
and I met her gaze. Her eyes watched me with interest. Was she the same turtle I'd seen all those nights before? She looked changed somehow, not quite as melancholy, more at peace, but still filled with longing. I wondered if she was thinking the same about me. I nodded my head. Mr. Emerson eased her into my outstretched arms, bearing the brunt of her weight with one hand on her underbelly, another atop her bumpy shell, if she squirmed or tried to get away. It would have toppled me, but she seemed to sense that we were returning her to the ocean. The skin on the bottom sides of her flippers and the place where her neck and head met was a yellowish brown and felt rough like the skin on grandpa's hands. The plates of her shell were much, much harder and along with the scales on her head and flippers had a reddish brown hue. She was the most majestic creature I'd ever seen. Yep. She's a beaut, isn't she? Mr. Emerson said, as if reading my mind. We carried her into the surf, and I ignored the coal leaching through my already wet clothes. When the water was up to my waist and mid-thigh on Mr. Emerson, we tipped the sea turtle forward, felt the water receive her weight, and gently let her go. She dipped beneath the waves, her mighty front flippers, propelling her into the vast churning sea. We will finish this book this week for sure, and we'll start tomorrow, page 184, chapter 21. Thank you so much, fourth grade champions. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.